So welcome back all of you to the next day session on this uh, fusion order management implementation. Nana here and then uh, we are continuing on the setup section. So let me go and then we'll have a look at the screen not yet. So here uh, in today's morning what happens I have given you one uh, set of video on the units of vendors actually. And then uh, Bala Anne from uh, uh, <coughs> Malaysia from Kuala Lumpur he raised the issue that he is unable to do anything at all. There is a problem on the what happens the creation of a unit server and the it item actually. Uh, and I gave a wrong information that what happens uh, in release 13 there is a change. Actually, it is not so. Uh, I will tell you what exactly it is now. So if you go there and then have a look at this now. Fine, go there, go to the inventory and then go to the items and then go to the master items now. And go there. I made a mistake actually in the statement actually. So here you're creating something, and then here what happens when you want to make a change of the units of measures on the bill of materials, it must be a standard bill actually. Had it been any other bill, what happens? It will never work at all. Fine. Model or option class or planning or product model, it will not work at all. Dual unit submissions will not work for any other item type actually. So this is almost the same case in Fusion also. Fine. The same thing has been made in now. In Fusion, what happens? I will not tell you what exactly is now. I will uh, open up now. So let me open up. In Fusion, what happens? It is the same case as such now. <clears throat> so I will go to this one. So click on sign in now. Hi, Nana. Yeah, hi, yeah. It's Das here. I hope you are recording this session. Yeah, you can see a recording icon on the left hand side top. My right? one goal icon is there. Are you able to see this now? <clears throat> are you able to see? You can now see. Yes, yes Nana. Yes, Nana. Yeah, okay, fine. okay. That recording icon is there. And then as long as the recording icon is there, what happens? It's getting recorded actually. Okay. okay. Now, what happens? I have now it to set up the item as such. Now, fine, go there. What happens? It will not be, I will not show you. Okay. Item uh, screen will come actually. I will now go to the product management now and go there. So, I will now go to the product management and then I go to the product information management. The item script will be coming now. So, ensure only one thing when you are using the units of measures and dual units of measures. Now, fine, go there. You click on create item. And then this place. What happens? You you put the organization now. And my organization is what? My organization is D010 now. I'm putting this now and go there. I will be getting the root item class also here now. Previously it was not coming. Now what happens? I have given the function security and data security yesterday, so it's not coming now. So after having given this, what happens? The template uh, is it to come now? Fine, we are not, not done it. Go there. Okay now. I'll be coming to the path. So what happens? I was discussing about the units of measures now. Fine. Go there. Okay. So after having done this, <coughs> we come to the next screen as such now. On the next screen, <clears throat> on the next screen, what happens? We are going to see one information now. Fine. You can now see the pack type. So do not choose any of the pack types. In which case, what happens? The dual units of measures will not work at all. Fine. You don't choose it. It is exactly similar to what we have in EBS now. Fine. If the bomb item type is standard, it will work. If you choose any of them, the dual units of measures will not work at all. And similarly, what happens? Even the defaulted ones. The defaulted ones on this primary units of measures, what happens? Sir? They will also, if you want to make a change, it will not work as long as the pack type is having some value. So you keep it, and then afterwards, what happens? You give Kajaraja, Jingich account, right? whatever you want to do, you do it now. And then afterwards, you continue, we save, it will not get saved. Right? That is the one which I wanted to inform you uh, regarding the units of measures and dual units of measures. So, Bala, what I told you is wrong. It is not a release 30 issue. It's a, a same concept which was there in EBS has been reproduced over here. So then you can try in EBS when you are creating an item, if the bill of material, if the bomb item type is going to be something else, what happens? We cannot perform the dual units of measures over here. Here also the same concept now. You make the pack type as none, and then what happens? You will be able to do the dual units of measures test actually. So today I have sent you uh, the, uh, the video on the dual units of measures. Fine, go on and make a check of it. The cancel. <clears throat> so that to begin with, what happens? I go there. Now. Continuing our activity on this one. Fine. Yesterday's activity, we are continuing now. We'll go there. <clears throat> so we are in the item class creation. Fine. We are in the item class creation. We go there and then we will now continue this activity on this one. <clears throat> you go there and then click on the name and the name can what happens? You go there, go to the setup and maintenance now. <clears throat> you go to the setup and maintenance. And then here you go there and then click on what you go there and then go to the search. Go to the search. And that will now open up the same one and go there. You know, go there. Go to the manage item classes. The task name fine. Take a copy and then put away now. Manage item class one. Enter now. So click on the manage item class, and then we are now going to go and then have a look at it. And I told you that there are five activities which are involved on this now. I highlight this and then click on edit. Now. I'm editing it now. I click on edit. I'm editing it now. So once we edit, what happens? It will now go to the next stage. There are five activities to be done now on this now. One is the basic one. Ensure that the item creation is allowed on this. Right? Then afterwards, the item management area. 
whatever they go there. And then CPU, the item number generation is user defined as well as what happened, the item description is user defined. So this portion I'm still learning as far as the configurator is concerned now. If I learn before the completion, whatever they will not demonstrate to you. And then afterwards, do not put a tick mark on the enabled new item members. This is only required for a higher license of PIM now. So we have a product license, we have a product and catalog license, and then we have a product and hub license actually. So for the product and catalog and then product hub, what happens, you may have to enable it. Right? Only for those licenses. For a basic license, what happens, this should not be enabled. Right? And then this is the second activity. The third activity is the security. The function security and data security has to be given for both the master and child actually. And remember, we have given for the master now. You go there, I'll go to query now, and go to the query example. Let me let me query now. So it's already gone for now. It is this now. So let me query it now. Find whether it's a cartel what it's a D01 and then zero is a one we are given now. Can you see the function security we are given now? Find whether for which what happens that we are given the data security also. <clears throat> so it will not show you the data security also on the bottom. Find whether the data security is also. So the function security and data security have been completed for the master. And then here what happens you go there and then afterwards the, the fourth setup is what life cycle basis. You go there, click on the life cycle basis. Even though this is required only for the higher license of PIM, what happens? We have to do it. Fine. We have already introduced this now. Fine. At the 25th one, what happens? I have so we have to have one life cycle phase defined and then inserted on this area. Otherwise, what happens? You will not be able to get an item at all. In a professional, when you, when you go for a, what happens? A, a test instance or a prod instance, what happens? There will be nothing, no entry at all. But here, what happens since so many people are already working on in your system, what happens? You'll be having plenty of entries over here and then ensure that you are inserting it over here. Also. Now, what happens? You go for the templates. Okay? You go to the templates and formats. Okay? What happens? You go to the templates and formats. And then here, let me query an existing template. Now. Go, go to the query mode now. Right? Go to the query by example. So I have one uh, B01 template now. Right? B01 template. Let me query it now. So I will now highlight it and then copy and then I will now make my own template actually. You, you go there in the left hand side, what happens? I highlight it and then click on the copy now and click on the copy icon. So, click on the copy icon here. What happens? The new organization is what I'm now having a D01 prefix now. Fine, D01, it is zero. Fine, go there. There's a new organization for which what happens? I'm going to get my copy. I will now say it's a D01. What happens? The fin goods templates. Fin goods. And what else I'm going to do now? I will, I will now give the description also the same thing. Now, fine, take copy and put the description. And then I will now make, set as a default for my line of business actually. For my line of business, for my structure, for my enterprise, what happens? I'm not making it as a default. So you can query one of the finished good templates. You can even just simply query a finished good template, and then what happens from there? You go for a copy and then do it. And click on OK by which what happens? A new template is not getting created. So that is known as a D01 fin goods. And click on OK. <clears throat> that is not getting created. And go there. So that is no come. And here, what happens? I'll not make item status is active. Life cycle phase, you drop down, and then what happens? You'll not put your production on here. Put yours in. So we will have only one entry there and then this is a mandatory entry on item creation and so what happens is required apart from that we do nothing on this. And then user item type is finished goods, you keep it, do not put any back type. If you put a back type, what happens is the dual unit submissions will not work at all fine. So make keep it blank as such. And this one is coming. And then here in the primary unit submissions, in your instance what happens, each is there. Here what happens, uh, this is the Kenyan instance and then they are using kilograms, I'm just keeping it as such, no, I'm not making any change now. Primary, primary, and standard. So, all these things are fully explained on my video, but how to set up everything. You just go through this and then try to make one exercise on the units of measures as well as dual units of measures so that what happens, you'll be getting conversant upon how to make each and everything. And if you want, you can even make your own units of measures and then try to populate on this place now. So, I'm now keeping kilograms. Whatever you feel like, you can just keep it. Otherwise, each is also available there. After having done this, what happens, you go to the specifications area, click on the specifications area, and then I'm going to show you the specifications. So go there. For this finished good item, what happens? I will now go to the manufacturing first of all. Click on the manufacturing and then keep the items type as standard now and go there. So costing is enabled as well as inventory asset values. Yes. If these two are on, what happens? This is an asset item actually. This is an asset item. Fine, go there. No doubt. And then build in whip is a must. Fine, go there. Make it as a yes actually. Make it as a yes now. I will come to the particular attribute a bit later now. Fine, go there. <clears throat> You go there. This is not required from my, what happens. It's only required from a manufacturing perspective. Process manufacturing is coming very soon. I don't know whether it has already come or not. Is it's on the way? Is what I told me. They told me, and this much is sufficient actually. I go there. So you go there. So ensure that the building is a yes now, and then the item structure is standard. Right? These are the only two things you have to concentrate upon, and then see that the item is an asset item actually. Costing is enabled, and then inventory asset value. And go there. Then after services for service model, you go to the inventory. In the inventory, what happens? You see that all the four are enabled. So this is basically called the item defining attribute and then stock is basically a status attribute fine. and then transactions enabled and then these three things are basically must. Afterwards what happened the rest are only controlled in the inventory module now 
you uh, buy my inventory model and learn each and everything everything is fully explained on this one and go there and then at first physical attributes also we are not touching anything and go to the sales and order management so in the sales and order management the customer ordered is item defining attribute the customer orders enabled is a status attribute ensure that these two things are on fine go there so internally transferable is just and then in transfer orders enabled is just okay that's okay fine you can just leave it as a no point go there and then see that the back to back enabled is null actually fine see that it is null actually back to back enabled is null now fine go there and here what about order management transactions are enabled as well as the shippable is just actually and then as far as the invoice creation is just fine go there in the invoicing area invoice is a item defining attribute invoice enabled is a status attribute fine these two things must be just as such Fine. This much is sufficient now. Fine, go there. You take a notes when you run the video. What happens? What are the things I am telling you? Fine. Returnable is also yes. If it is not returnable, let us say what happens? We are now selling a yeah, kela. Why a payam? <clears throat> fine. If you are selling it, what happens? If the customer is returning the banana back, you will not be able to return it back. Fine. So if, then for banana, what happens? The returnable will be no. Fine. Edible or edible items will be having returnable as well. I don't know what exactly is that finance and what we can talk to the AR team and then see what exactly. Is. So this is the sales and order management. Now you go to the planning. Now. And go there. Here, what happens? The important things is what customer ordered and customer ordered enabled must be on now, and then it must be shippable, and then back to back orders null actually, and then order management transactions are enabled, and then invoicing is also enabled. And right, this much is sufficient. And then afterwards, you go to the planning now. I click on the planning. <clears throat> so in the planning area, what happens? You go there, and then here uh, the inventory planning method will be explained on the inventory training actually. And go there. It will be explained on the inventory training. Otherwise, what happens? We leave it as such. No point. Go there. Go down. And then here, uh, what happens? You make the planning method as a MRP. Plan. If you make it as a MPS planning, it is only for production actually. MRP is for what happens a make and buy basically, whereas MPS is only for make actually. So make the planning method as a MRP planning and go there, and then uh, you can leave the remaining things as blank as such. And go there, and then we can leave it as so much. The remaining. Can say it again. Ah? Huh? Can you say it again? MRP and MPS. MPS means what? It is now going to give a recommendation only for production now. Fine. Let us say uh, there is. Yeah, I am now having going to have a what happens? I am now going to manufacture a monitor. The monitor has got a picture tube and motherboard. Say. Picture tube I am going to buy from external agency, and then motherboard I am going to manufacture. So on the motherboard front, what happens if you are having what MPS planning? It will now make the motherboard, but it will not buy the picture tube at all. And that is basically for the planning actually. So if it is the MPS one, it will not give any buying recommendation at all. Only make recommendation will go. So always what happens? Make it as MRP. MRP will now take care of both buy and make actually. And this is from a planning central perspective. Fine, always it is recommended to keep as MRP. If your total thing is going to be only manufacturing and the no purchase, then you can go for MPS also. That will work. So just keep it. What happens? You keep this now. So this is on this one now. And then what else? Any other important? And the make and buyers make. So make or buy is a make. On the planning, what happens? You see that the make or buy is make actually. And then afterwards, what happens? This is the MP, MRP planning actually. MRP plan. So these are the two important attributes as far as the planning is concerned. And then afterwards you go to the purchasing, and then always give a list price. Now I go there. So the order will be getting deported. I go there. So give a list price. Okay. And I'm give some value of three, so three and then okay. some list price. Okay. So by which what happens again? What happens? The purchased is yes, as well as purchasable is yes actually. And these two things will be on. And then give a list price. So this much are important from what happens from an order management perspective. The manufacturing, the inventory. The sales and order management, planning, and then purchasing. Fine, go there. <clears throat> In fact, if you go and then see on this place now, you'll be having 16 such tab regions. They have been coupled uh, into seven tab regions actually. Fine, these things have been coupled into seven tab regions now. So that's why what happens? You're getting only this much now. Okay, you go there. So in this place, you're getting only this much. <clears throat> only seven tab regions are coming. So if you go to the manufacturing area itself, what happens? You cannot see man, multiple things are coupled together. <clears throat> you go there and see here what happens. Item structure is bomb now. Costing is there. Whip is there. I mean, everything is now coupled. Process manufacturing. All these things are basically coupled. So here, if you see, everything will be separate actually. So go there. So costing is separate, and then manufacturing working process is separate now. I mean, likewise, what happens? There are so many things which are separate. They, the bill, in, bill of materials is basically bomb. So all these things are coupled into one manufacturing area as such in the future. Almost uh, many of the attributes are uh, being kept over here now, and not uh, everything has been dropped down. And they they made some analysis, and then what happens? Uh, they have decided to keep certain attributes, and then certain attributes have been dropped down. Fine, go there. It's okay. Fine. <clears throat> go there and see this. Fine. With this much of a thing, what happens? Uh, now my template is ready now. Fine, go there. Click on save and close. Fine, that's all. So all the five activities are now complete. Fine. The basic, the item management, the security, and then the life cycle phases, and then creation of a template, and then making it as a default actually. Fine, go there. Now D zero one is a default now. Fine. It is only for my enterprise now. Fine, go there. Click on save and close by which is now complete. Actually. Now you will now go and then create the item. Fine. Item creation is very much possible. So let us go there and then create the item. Click on done now. 
Now click on the home icon. <clears throat> click on the home icon. And now you go to the product management. Right? Click on the product management. And then you go to the product information management from there, what happens? We are going to get an item. Now. And click on product management. Product information management is the one through which what happens? We are going to get an item. And go click on it now. And then click on the task carousel and then click on create. Click on create. So in EBIS, what we do is when you go there and then open up the item form, and go there. When you open up the item form, what happens? A blank form is going to come. Fine. Here, what happens? You know, say English or Chinese or Fine. Go there. We give the item name and description. Afterwards, you apply a template. Now. Fine. Go there. Go to the tools. And then here, what happens? You go to the copy from and then apply a template. Now. Fine. Go there. Purchased item template is not getting applied. And then click on the now. So you give the name and description. And then afterwards, apply a template. Fine. Go there. Here, the same development. Here, first of all, whenever you are working on the child or the child's master, automatically opens the EBIS. And then here, we have to explicitly say which is your master first of all. Right? What is your master? And I go there. I will know D01, and then the master will be coming. In fact, what happens? This organization will now list down only the ma only the master. Org. None of the child org will come out here. Go there. All the master orgs are displayed over here. It will not display any child org now. So I will not choose my master over And then item class will be coming. This item class is an addition one when compared to EBS. Now EBS is not having an item class now. Go there. If I put root, what happens now? It will come. So yesterday it was not coming because what happened? All the five activities in the manage item class was not complete now. So after having completed all the five activities, oh God, somebody is telling me that let us speak slow. Okay, I will not try to speak slow. Okay, good, good root item class. So if the manage item class is not complete, it will not come at all. Fine, click on it. What happens? You cannot see everything is coming. And then I have selected this as a default template that is already coming on the selected list. So click on OK. By which what happens? The template gets applied upon this on the item. So the first activity is to apply a template. Then afterwards, what happens? Fill up the balance ones. Click on OK now. Fine. By which what happens? The template gets applied. Now you can see the item status is coming. The life cycle phase is coming. The what happens? The user item type is a finished good. And then if you go down, what happens? You can now see my primary units of measures, primary, primary, except private things becoming coming. And remember. When you're working on a dual unit submissions, you ensure that the pack type is blank. And then here you have to modify the primary unit submissions after watching my video. If you, if you modify it, what happens? It gets changed over here. <clears throat> so that way, that way. So all the things has been fully explained on my, and my unit submissions training. Try to practice once so that what happens? You'll be getting familiar with the unit. So it's a very tough topic, actually. Uh, one of my students has even lost the job because he was unable to understand it clearly. Actually. Fine. So don't make that mistake and understand it clearly. So we are going to create our first item now. Fine, go there. It is a D01 and go there. So I will have one item over here now. <clears throat> I will not use this one. Fine. It is a D0101 standard order the one. Fine. Let me take a copy of it now and go there. Well, no, go and then create the item. And go there. So let me paste it now. And go there. Paste it. And then click on the description also and paste it in the same thing. And since the template is already applied, I need not have to modify any specifications at all. If you go to the specifications here, you go there, go to the specifications. And then here, what happens? If you go and then see the, in the purchasing, I've given uh, the price is three, isn't it? Fine. You cannot see the price is three. And in the planning, whatever I have given, everything will be coming also. Fine. It's, a, it's a make. One. And then here, we have MRP, you know, and go there. So everything is coming as it should. <clears throat> and go there. So it's okay. And go there. It's a, it's a, it's a, and then uh, just keep it everything. And then here, what happens? You go there and then give a save. I'm not going to give a save. Now. Click on save. So by which what happened? The item gets created in the master. Now. So the moment you give a save, what happens? You cannot see the D010 is not coming. And remember, I have not given the function security and data security for my child dog. And so what happens? I cannot associate with the child at all. So what I do is I will now duplicate one more tab region now and go there. I will now right click and then duplicate now. And one more tab region is coming. So one more tab region, I will opening it up. Now. And then here in this place, what happens? I go there and then try to assign it to the child dog. So click on the associations now. Fine, click on the associations here. What happens? I'm going to associate the item to the child or now. Now it is in the master now. I go to the actions and then I go to select an add now. Action select an add. And then here, let me query it now. And go there. It's a capital D, a zero, 01, and then give enter now. It will not show both the options. The child, both the child is not showing. I will not choose only one of the child. I click on apply and then click on now. I cannot do it because for this org, I have not provided the function security and data security. So I cannot associate with the child at all. So if you give a save, what happens? It will not say cheap. Oh, I will not do it. So click on save. It will not give you a big error actually. <clears throat> because zero D010, we are given the function security and data security. Whereas for the remaining two child dogs, what happens? We are not given. It is not doing a suti fine. What happens? It is not saying application error. This thing, what up, Onga? There's no saying. So it is not allowing you. So we have to give that function security and data security for every R. So it is not working at all. So D0101 is the one. So go there. I will not go to the again. I will not cancel this first of all. I'm going to cancel this. I'm unable to save it actually. 
So click on cancel now. Okay, click on this now. Uh, I go there. And then click on it, and then I go to the setup and maintenance. <coughs> see, see, this, this is the problem now. Once when it throws an error, what happens? It will not work at all. Now what happens again? Sometimes what happens when you click on the home icon, it will work. When you click on the home icon, it will work. Remember, and even if it doesn't work, what happens? You duplicate and then keep another tab region and then start to work on this. And the home icon, what happens? It will work. Otherwise, what happens? It will be very difficult actually. When an error comes in, what happens? The screen gets locked on something like that. It will not work. Go to the setup and maintenance. And then here, what happens? Go there. And then we will now give the function security and data security for the child org actually. If I click on search now, for the master, we already given. Go there. So the this thing is what manage item class is the task name. Fine. Take a copy of it and then go there. And then paste it over here. Now. Fine. Go there. Oh God, I started speaking fast. <laughs> I cannot control this at all. So click on the manage item class now. You select the line and then click on edit now. Click on edit now and go there. And then you go to the security directly and then let me add for the child. Click on plus. And then here what happens? Now I am in this place now. Fine. Go there. Click on plus now. So the moment you give a plus, what happens? One more line gets added up. Now I am in this place. In your case, what happens? There are so many orgs are there. What happens? This will be somewhere bottom now. You have to drag it to the top now. I remember you have to drag it to the top. You might have given a plus. What happens? The line will not be visible because what happens? This uh, sliding bar will be in the bottom for you now because there are plenty of orgs are there. So what happens? You bring the sliding bar to the top and then afterwards you go there and then put the product data steward over here. Product data steward. And then give a tab. So once when you give a tab, what happens? It has to ask this question. If this question is not asked, again, what happens? You cancel and then come back and then again do it. Because what happens? You should not choose EG at all. It will not work. Only for ORI it will work. So this question has to be asked now. If it is not asking, what happens? You do not proceed further at all. Fine, click on OK. And then choose the ORA. If you give a tab and then it comes to this field directly, what you do is you simply cancel and then again come back. Fine. Please remember it. Fine. By mistake, if it, if the EGA is done, what happens? It may give some problem. That's what one of my uh, hub specialists told me now. Uh, see that you are giving a product here of ORA. Uh, it will work for something and then for some of them it will not give error. I can't explain you. That's what he said to me. So what happens is, is the way you have to do it. So click on this org. I will not give the org. It's a D01 and then 1. Remember I have three orgs. My prefix is D01. The D010 is the master org. D011 is the first child org. And then D012 is the second child org. So having given this, what happens? You go there and then give a save and close now. And go there. Because of the previous bugs, I'm doing it like this now. I click on save and close now. So by which, what happens? I get save and close. I will again go there and then give the data security. Fine, go there. Click on it and then click on edit now. And then let me go to my R now. Fine, go there. Go to the security. And then uh, your org may not be immediately visible now. Fine, go there. Go to the query mode. And then here, what happens? I will not put the org. Fine, go there. D011, one, and then dish you. Fine, go there. It will not come. I will not select the line now. The function security line, I'm selecting it. So once when you select it, what happens in the bottom? It has to come with the product data sequence of your org name actions. Now. If this is not coming again, what happens? You see that you're querying properly. Sometimes you may have to requery query again, and then ensure that you're getting this information over here now. Fine. Product data sequence, fine. Tell what you're ensuring it. Go there. Go there. And then click on actions, and then go to select and add again now. And click on action select and add. And then here, what happens? I make a search now. Fine. Click on simple search. It will show you a lot of things. And then by the head of actions, what happens? You'll be having a double square box. Fine. Click on it. Everything gets selected now. And go there. And then click on apply. And then click on OK. Click on apply. And then click on OK. <clears throat> it is not done now. Fine. Go there. And now, what happens? Everything is OK. Then save and close now. Have a look at it now. What happens? Each and every zone must have the data security actually. Fine. Go there. It's all it been come in and go there. And go, there. go there. And then click on save and close by which what happens for this org we have completed. Similar exercise has to be done for the next child org also. Fine. Go there, go to the edit, and then click on what happens in security. And then here I will not give a plus now. Fine. Go there, give a plus now. So once when I give a plus, since I don't have much of an entry, what happens? You see, now for me also it is not in the top. I've given a plus. What happens? This this sliding bar is here. Fine. Push it up. Up, up, up. Go up. Fine. Go there. In this place, what happens? You'll be having it. Fine. Click on it now. I don't know whether I have taken a copy of it or not. Fine. Oh, you see, this sort of errors are coming. They're all bekar. I am not going to enter. Why are you throwing an error in here? When I'm committing it, at the time she error it, what happens is okay. Thank you. That is not coming. So I will not put it now. Fine. Go that product data steward. Then if I give a tab, what happens? I have to get the Dora and then EJ one fine. Go that. We got it now. Fine. One the Okay, click on it and then click on OK now. Fine. By which what happens? It gets done. And then afterwards I will now populate my second org over here now. Fine. Go that. It's a D012. It's a very sensitive one, and then please follow the instructions clearly. Otherwise, what happens in the production instance? My students have got a problem. They got struck. The one girl has got struck frantically, and then I asked her first of all, delete it, and then again reintroduce it. It came actually. 
that way she was struggling for more than 2 hours and then i was in sanishwaran temple in tirunallar and then what happens i couldn't lift the phone because it's in a mute actually uh, i was seeing that it is a ringing but what happens is i am in a temple places i cannot do it now she was desperately trying to contact me because what happens she got stuck on this phone <laughs> and then she is before the customer actually so see to it that what happens if something is not working you delete and then save and then come out and then again what happens to do all these things and then again if you follow this philosophy what happens you don't have a problem you can even keep on plus 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 and then finally do it right that may also work but it was giving some issues after introducing the function security give a save and close and then go back and then again query and then do it it doesn't matter even if it takes some time but what happens this will definitely work for the security and then let me query mine now fine go there go to the query mode query mode is already there and go that d01 and then 2 is a one query it now and go there i'm querying it so select it and then here what happens i'm not going to give the data steward actions now fine go there go to the actions and then go to select map and then i'm going to give it now <coughs> Go there. Click on search now. So everything is going to come now. Fine, go there. So select everything over here and then go down and then click on apply and then okay. Fine, go there. What else? <coughs> it's not done. Fine, go there. So click on save and close by which what happens? We are now done. The completed the function security and data security for the one master and two child actually. Now we can very well assign the items to this place now. In your instance, what happens? Your uh, manage items is not going to work now. <coughs> if you go to the home icon and then I will now click on the product management and then go to the product information management. And then I go there, and then here, if you click on it, and then go to the manage items form, what happens? <coughs> it will not work for you. The manage item forms here. What happens? Somebody has done the personalization on it. What happens? <coughs> <coughs> it is not working there. <coughs> <coughs> so what you do is, in one go, you do it now. This form is not working there as such now. So you do the creation as well as assignment in one go. <coughs> You go there and then here we'll not query the item now find go there d0101 is the one <coughs> so the item begins on d0101 actually fine go there i'm not going to make a query on this item fine, go there. he's working in my instance but not in your instance now fine, click on search now so once when you search for it what happens you can now see an entry in the master line. and you can even add an image everything you can just go on them and try to make uh, image is not showing fine, you can even hide the image you can even add an image also you can just see where exactly they are and you can very well add all those things and then have a look at it now here what happens i go there and then click the hyperlink on this item now it is now assigned or is now done to the d010 organization now the master organization i will not click on the hyperlink it will open up <coughs> the item is getting opened up now i go there and then i am going to associate if i click on the associations and then here what happens i go there i will now associate with the child also go, there, go to the actions and then go to the certain act so let me associate with the child this time what happens it will not be getting any error now the d01 and then enter in now find both the child will be coming up now find there. select it and then select it now with the control i'm selecting both now find there. with the control key i'm selecting both click on apply and then click on done what happens it will be coming now find there. <clears throat> becoming. now if you give a save it will not throw any error at all because what happens function security and data security have been done for both the ops now. i click on save now you cannot see it will be getting saved mandichi we got it so item is now created I click on save and close now <clears throat> now let us now go and then keep a stock on this. Fine. We are going to keep a stock on this item now. Fine, go there. So we have to keep a stock now. Fine, go there. I will now go there. I will now receive the item at the inventory now. Fine, click on the home icon and then let me go to the inventory management. So we will now keep a stock on this. Fine, click on the inventory management. And then here, what happens? You go there. You are now going to the inventory management. So click on it and then we will now make a create zip. Fine, go there. Click on create zip. Create miscellaneous transactions. The one. Fine, go there. I am in the inventory area. Click on create miscellaneous transaction and go there. The organization is what? Capital D 011 is the organization, the first child. Fine, click on OK now and go there. What else? The organization is coming now. Fine, go there. You can now see the organization coming at the top. Here, what happens? You put M and then give a tap. Fine. If you give a M and tap, what happens? It will show you. Select the miscellaneous result over here. Now. Fine. Select the miscellaneous result over here. Fine. Click on OK now. I'm not getting selected. And then the account number, what happens? We need the account number. So in EBS also, we used to give the account number. What happens? I will not choose this. 10, 100, 1000. Fine, go there. It will be defaulting. Fine, go there. I will not choose it now. Fine, go there. I am not choosing it now. Fine, go there. So I am now choosing it. And then I'm not choosing the account now. Fine, it is now rotating, rotating. <coughs> and then we'll now see what happens on this now. Fine, go there. <coughs> so it is now trying to validate whether this account is an okay account or not. Fine, it says there is no such account at all. Fine, if you click on search now, fine, you will now find there will be no account at all. That means what? This account is not eligible for a transaction actually. Now we have to go to theory now. Fine, go there. Why this account is not coming here? The account is not coming here. Fine. It is not accepting this account at all. Fine. The account is not accepted because what happens is not available as such. No, fine. That. So there is no account. If you click on this icon and then click on search, what happens? No accounts will be coming. And click on search now. 
any vehicle can search, what happens? There are no accounts to transact. Now, what happens? The financials comes into picture out. Now we have to learn a theory also. Fine, go there. So let us not go to the theory part on this now. Fine, go there. I'll not go to the fusion volume documents now. Fine, go there. I will now say the P2P process. Nana? Yeah, tell me. Yeah. I have a question. If the account is not existing, why is it defaulting to a certain value? Mm, it is only coming up over here. Fine, go there. When you click on it, what happens? Something is coming here now. If you go there, and then here, it was used in the previous exercise. What happens? You go there, go down, drop down. Account is existing. And go there, 10 is existing. If you go to the department, what happens? The, uh, the department is also coming up. Fine, go there. And then I have the account. There are four accounts we are given now 1000, 1001, 1000, and 2003. And all are coming. And if you give OK, what happens? It will not say cheapo. Fine, the combination cannot be used. Now. So in, in R2, well, you know, we have that in you know, a code combination, right? Is that exactly. the same? Way we have to no, no, that, that is a different thing. In, in R2, well, what happens? You are telling about the code combination, ID, isn't it? Fine, that is a different right. one. Fine. Right. I'll now come to that one again. I'll now go there. Go to the switch GL now. Fine, go there. I'll now go to the general GL. Fine, go there. So here, if you go there, if you go to setups, and then you go to the financials, and then you go to the flux fields, and then go to the key, and then go to the segments now. Fine, go there. If you go and then query this now, fine, go there. Capital G, percentage, capital L, percentage, and then query it now. Fine, go there. If you query it, what happens? I'll now query. Here, what happens? You cannot see. The, what happens? You have a flux field definition, and then here, what happens? The cross validation rules, the dynamic insert is there. So once when a dynamic insert is on, what happens? Whenever you're going to transact on a specific one, it gets inserted into the core combination table. Actually. The same feature is available here also. Whenever you are transacting on any new account, what happens? That gets inserted into the core combination ID table. And so what happens? It becomes then automatically, if there is no entry on the core combination table, this tick mark will now automatically make an insertion. And then what happens? It becomes a valid one. So the same feature is available in Fusion also. But here, what happens? We have one subledger accounting. Before you make any transactions on inventory, what happens? The subledger accounting model will be set actually. If SLA is not set, what happens for the inventory? And then for all the subledgers, we cannot work at all. So if anybody knows SLA here, fine. If you, if you have a person on SLA, what happens? You'll be able to do it now. Fine. If SLA is known, fine. A yes, similar activity of SLA is known as transaction accounting builder mode. TAD. So transaction accounting, uh, accounting definition and then transaction accounting will tap tab. So that has to be set. Then only what happens, you can do it. So if you go and then see on the inventory area, go there, go to the inventory. <clears throat> Whenever you have performed the transactions, so you go there, go to the transactions. And then here, what happens, the transaction summaries, I go, I go there. I will know the transactions, middle transaction, I will not go on and have a look at it. Transaction, middle transaction, I will go there. And then here, what happens, I will not give, a, uh, I will not give some period, now. Go there. so I have done something in the month of January, I think. I go there. Uh, uh, I have done when I was in US, I made some transactions actually. Uh, you know, go and have a look at those transactions. So I will not say zero one Feb <clears throat> iPhone 18 now. And then give it a and then I will now make a search now. Find it on Zero one Feb 18 <clears> the <throat> 23rd October uh, 2023. Date format correct now. Otherwise, what happens? I will not remove both things. Now. It's not a mandatory field actually. Find it. And then what happens? I will now make a blank search on this now. Because I was conducting a manufacturing training from US actually. So at the time I made some transactions actually. <clears throat> so if you see here what happens, uh, the uh, cost, the accounting distributions take place perpetually in EBIS. So as and when you perform any transactions in EBIS, what happens, the accounting entries are also made. Here it is not. In Fusion, what happens, uh, no accounting transactions are, uh, no accounting entries are made actually. But accounting must be set in the SLA. Only when you set the accounting in SLA in EBIS, and then here, what happens on TAP, Transaction Accounting Builder, you set it up. Then only what happens, the transactions are basically possible. So the financial team has to set it up now. Fine, go there. So that part, what happens, I am not fully aware of it. I know something, something of it now. Fine, I will now explain you what I know. This. So it takes some long time because I am given a blank query. So what happens, I will now start to explain that process. So let us open up a P2P process on this one. Now, fine, go there, let us now open it. This is for purchasing accounting actually. This document is for purchasing accounting. From where, what happens, I will now show you the financial accounting also. I will now show you the financial accounting also. So let me explain the purchasing accounting on this now. <clears throat> and then I will now show you the financial accounting also. So we have to set up the financial accounting for doing any inventory transactions. And then we have to set up the purchasing accounting for making any purchasing transactions actually. Fine, both of the things we are going to set up now. So once we set up, what happens, you can now see this. I will now enable it and go there. Maximize it. So purchasing works in five zones actually, fine, five zones. So the first zone is what? When a PO is created, there are no accounting involved. Fine. It is true in EBS and Fusion actually. When a PO is approved, no accounting entries are made. And then when you make a gate receipt, now, fine, when you make a gate receipt, the receiving inspection is account receipt on the data side. And then the contra entry for this is accrual account that goes into the trade transaction. 
Fine. This is known as a notional liability. So once when the gate entry is made. Now once when you deliver the material into the inventory, what happens? The inventory material value will be hit and then the contra entry will be receiving inspection. Now. If it's going to be a standard costing, the purchase price variance also will be hit. If it's average costing, PPV will not be hit. Now. And then what happens? The cost accountants will now study this and then they will now write down. It will be written off actually. So here, the, uh, so here this is what's called, this is one account now. Then what happens after two zones of entries, what happens is that your receiving inspection gets knocked off over here. And then your accrual to your charge account, this is known as a charge account actually. Accrual to charge account will be remaining after two zones of accounting entries. Then you make an invoice over here now. So the moment you make an invoice, what happens? The accrual gets relieved actually. It comes over here now. And then afterwards, what happens? You make an actual liability by adding the flights, miscellaneous expenses, taxes, etc. The actual liability is getting great. So the accrual gets relieved in the zone three entry. And then the liability is no need. So after zone three, what happens? You'll be having what? The charge account to liability will be the remaining account. Then what happens? You're going to issue a check now. And once you issue a check, what happens? The liability gets relieved and then the cash clearing is getting it. So after fourth zone entry, what happens? Your charge account to what happens? The cash clearing account will be the pending accounts. And then once when the customer encashes the check, fine, what happens? And then you make the bank statement reconciliation in the cash management. What happens? This gets relieved and then what happens? The cash is hitting it. So once when the P2P cycle is hit, what happens? It's completed. What happens? The final entries are what? This is called the charge account to cash account. Actually. So what happens? The purchasing team will be basically analyzing how much of money is being spent on every charge account. There are multiple ways of doing a charge account. I will uh, send one uh, video about how to do the charge account, fine, how to, what happens, uh, set the charge account on both eBiz as well as Infusion, fine, that, I, that I know because I, I worked on it actually. So on both the eBiz and uh, what happens in your this thing, what happens, I will know. I, it will now explain you about how to do this. Now. I will now just come out here. Okay, so here I will now make something. Okay, go there. I will now go to this one. And go to the distributions now. This is the accounting distribution. I click on the distributions now. You can now see that what happens, the accounts is getting what happens hit now. You can now see, you go to the what's called, uh, you go to the type now, fine, go there. Is that what happens, in transit inventory to inventory valuation. So everything will be, uh, there will be a contra entry here, or otherwise what happens, it will be having the first entry over here now. So the inventory valuation is the must structure. So this has to be set in, 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 your, in your SLA. So this is an account for financial uh, transactions actually. For any financial transactions, if inventory valuation is not set, what happens? We cannot perform any actions on the subledgers. Inventory is a subledger. Purchasing is a subledger. Uh, likewise, what happens? We cannot do that at all. Fine. This inventory valuation is a must. So it has to be set. So since I have not set, what happens? It was throwing an error over here. Like this. The combination cannot be used. So I have to set up inventory valuation first. Fine. I have to set up inventory valuation. Here. So here, what happens is perpetual actually. As and when you perform the transaction, the valuation account is hitting hit. And what happens? The accounting is also made. That is in fusion, it is not so. Here, the eligibility criteria is what inventory valuation is here, but accounting does not take place once when you complete the transaction. Because there is no periods at all in fusion. Nicely done. So they have what happens bypass the period concept, and then there is no period at all, both in inventory as well as in purchasing. But if inventory valuation is not set on the financial side, what happens? It will never allow you to perform any transactions on the inventory at all. And similarly on the purchasing also, fine. all the things will not be done. So inventory valuation is for supply chain management. Remember, fine. That, that account has to be hit. That account has to be set now. So when you set it, what happens? We can now do this now. Fine. There's no code combination existing at all. If you give a search also, what happens? Nothing will be coming out now. And no data is coming. So we have to set up the inventory valuation. Now. So this example, what I told you is for a procure to pay actually. Fine. It is all fully explained on my video. You can just go through the video. Then I have given that this account, what happens? This is called a charge account to cash account from a purchasing perspective and then from a financials perspective, it will be inventory valuation account to cash account. Inventory valuation account to cash account. And then from a purchasing perspective, what happens is a charge account to cash account. So I will try to, uh, today night I will not do it. So tomorrow what happens, I will be sending that video. Just go through this video, you will understand. It. And because we have, I was involved to some extent on the financials also. So I know something of here and there. So whatever I know, I have explained it. So now since inventory valuation is not uh, set actually, fine. go there anywhere, whatever you'll be seeing the inventory valuation coming up. No, fine. Go there. In this place, if you go to the distribution, go there, go there. <coughs> oh, no, no distribution has taken place for this now. <coughs> go down. <coughs> Item one in the staging area. <coughs> this is the one, fine. Go there. So you'll be having inventory valuation somewhere in this place or in this place. Fine. And then from an order management point of view, the cost of goods also is a must. 
the cost of goods is a must now right so since we are dealing with order management we will now to set up the cost of goods account as well as what upon the inventory valuation account these two accounts will be set in the financials on the sla of ebis and then on the transaction accounting builder of fusion actually so let us now go on and set it up and then do it now and go that orders so uh, this is all explained in the video fully and then my purchasing training will also be giving a lot of examples on this now and go that so you go there and then let us now set it up now. So, so Nana, Nana, is there any deferred cogs concept also in the question? Yes, 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 it is all there. The deferred oh. cogs, everything is there. So, in fact, what happens when receivable steam is coming? What happens even the deferred cost, deferred cogs also will use a time. I have seen it. The deferred cogs also they used to set actually. But at least cogs must be set. The cost of goods go go sold account is there. So let us now set these two accounts now, and then we will now start to proceed on this. This is for financial accounting, and then the cost is for order management. Actually, right? let us now set both the values now. Right? Then what happens? Now make it eligible for this. So I go there, go there, click on it, and then here I am going to set it up now. Right? Click on this one. I go to the setup and maintenance now. I go to the setup and maintenance, and then here what happens? Go there, and then you click on what you click on the task result, and then here you go to the manage implementation projects. Task result, you go to the manage implementation project. Let me query my project now. Right? With the D zero one is the one. Let me query it now. Open it up. So in this, what happens? Uh, we call this as a manage mapping set. Now, right? go there. Query for the manage mapping set. Now, right? manage percentage, map percentage, set percentage. Then enter now. Manage mapping set. So in this, what happens? You have to choose the manufacturing one. Now, right? There will be this manage mapping set will be available on multiple paths. So on this, what happens? You have to go and then choose the manufacturing path now, and that too the cost management now, not on the receipt accounting. Right? In the receipt accounting, you should do. You go to the cost accounting. Remember, this is the financials activity which they will be setting up each and every account is equivalent to SLA of EBS basically. So, in the manufacturing cost account, and click on the manage mapping set. And click on the manage mapping set. And then here, what happens for us to do the financial accounting? What happens? You have to go on and select the scope actually for the manage mapping set. And click on select scope. All the subledges will be shown over here. If you go there, it will now show all the subledges. Fine, go there, click on it, select and then click on apply and go to ask. You will now have all the subledges. In fact, what happens? They will be setting up each and every thing. Each and every subject they will do it. It's a big task by the financial side, and then I got one document from them as far as the setting up of this account is concerned. Now, just have a look at it. Now, I go there. Accounting entries, all modules. There. This one, this one. And I got this document from them. So these things they will be setting up on each and every SLA. Actually. They will not set up. They will not go there and then do it. Set up. Fine. Go there. Sit along with them. When I was a project manager, what happened? The financial team was working day and night for almost uh, four to five days to set up all these accounts. Actually. <clears throat> And then go there. First, what they did is uh, they have done the chart of accounts creation. Of, I will not show you one side. See, see an example. And go there. So how they did it, I will not tell you. Go there. So here, uh, what they did, what they did is uh, I don't know whether this is a standard practice or only for the customers they have done it. Now, there are five activities. One is what uh, you have uh, the asset, the liabilities, the revenue, the expenditures, and then the owner's funds. For each and everything, what happens? The account is getting generated actually. For the example, the two thousand, they do it in five levels of account. The account building is taking place in five levels now. So liability is now going to start in two thousand. Asset will be starting on thousand actually. Right? That way they have configured now. Asset is starting on thousand, and then uh, liabilities are starting on two thousand now. And then afterwards, what happens? The first variant is what the current liabilities is two thousand one hundred. And go there. And then afterwards, what happens? The non-current liabilities is two thousand five hundred. Likewise, what happens? The variance will be there as well. So once one variance comes, then afterwards, what happens? The third level is a level three actually. And if you see, is the level three. In the level three, there will be a fourth thing. When two one zero zero is the trade payables, two one two zero is the what happens? The payroll payables. Likewise, what happens? There will be further variations. Level three. And in the level four, what happens? It will now have further or further one. Point is where they say two one 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 is a trade payable, and then two one two one is a the same. Like what happens? It will be going for the fourth level. Then afterwards, in the fifth level, what happens? The three more numbers will be added. Actually, fine. Go there. In this place, what happens? They added account payable straight. What happens? The two one 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 iPhone zero zero zero. So it's a seven segment code actually. So they have come up to the seven segment code on the chart of accounts. And then what happens? Initially, how many levels they want to go? They discuss with the end client. And then accordingly, what happens? They will now gradually improve it. And then in the final level, what happens? Are three more segments, three more numbers will be added. And then there's a seven segmental chart of accounts. Two one 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 zero 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 one. Fine. It is a What happens is a natural account for this. So likewise, what happens? There will be thousands of accounts. You know, it took around almost three weeks for them to design this particular account actually. So this has to be in conjunction with the financial team, and then they will not design everything. Fine. So once when the chart of accounts is not designed with all the thousands of accounts, what happens? They will not first of all put the Excel sheet, and then they will not upload it actually <clears throat> into the system actually. Then what they do is they will now go through this document. They show me, but how they have done it? Fine. Bob Ray, it's really. 
very painful actually dear i say that don't go into the financials at all financials is not an easy one fine supply chain is so easy financials is really very tough so you can now see one document on what accounting entries all modules where is the accounting entries all modules so here what happens on the sla they will now do each and every setup say so for example i am in a ptp life cycle so for which what happens they will not say the receiving account api account account and then raw material supplementary ppv receiving fine or that for every combination what happens there will be accounts plenty of accounts there fine if you go to the back to back order fine. these are the accounts now basically so for each and everything they have this setup standard setups are available whatever is there in ebiz is applicable in fusion no fine there is no change at all that what they say so each and everything fine for the drop ship drop one of us will be having certain accounts now and then for the sales order work order fine we have this many this many accounts all these accounts they will now set up on this what happens if you are this thing now the intro intro transfers what are there this many accounts please. so this they will now set up everywhere in this place actually on each and every what happens subnet application they will now go there and then set up each and everything now. so this is a big uh, daunting task actually fine now let us say what happens we will not do only for the financial accounting from a supply chain perspective and not for anything else i will not choose the cost accounting You click on the cost accounting and then click on save and close we go inside i go to the cost accounting and then go there so if the inventory valuation is set what happens all supply chain transactions can be done i go there drop it on you can now see plenty of things are there fine there is no starting any a there is no coming and see fine go there if you drop down you will be having plenty of accounts which will be coming up so many accounts and many of them will be set by the merchant remember they are selling many of those things fine if you drop down it long go up to you know, keep on going down down It's a big, big job, basically. For <clears throat> each and every account. Otherwise, what happens? The financial accounting will not take place. Sometimes it will not even allow the supply chain transaction at all if those accounts are not set. Actually, sometimes if it is not set, what happens? It will allow, but it will not land up in error. So that they will identify only when they make the trial balance. Actually, once when they make the trial balance, it will now hit which are all the accounts which are not set properly. Everything it will not show. They will again go and then do it and then make some test transactions and then, then tally the trial balance. Actually. Balancing and tallying the trial balance, and then what happens? The coming to conclusion itself is a Herculean task actually for the financial guys. Now I have now put the in what happens item valuation, inventory valuation. Right? Search, expand the search, and then I will now say what happens? IMV inventory, and then what happens? Give us search now. I will now say inventory valuation account number. Find the one. Find it. And click on the inventory valuation account. I am setting it on behalf of the financials now. Right? The inventory valuation. When go there. Here, let me introduce my chart of accounts. Fine, is not there. So let me introduce it now. Fine, click on plus now. So let me put my chart of accounts over here now. When go there, click on plus now. I am not putting it. Remember, it's not your job. It is a financial job. But some companies, what happens? They throw open to SCMT. If the people know it, what happens? Are you able to make it? Fine. I am going. Itna sara kam hai. Fine. Uh, in our company, what happens? Uh, my is actually is a is a work together actually in a smaller company. Fine. Our team, what happens? Do financial also supply chain also everything they will not do depending upon the manpower of the team. You drop down. I will now choose my D one C O E. I'm choosing it. I will now give what happens. I will now choose and then go down. And then the bottom what happens? I will now go on and do the mapping. I click on plus. So the inventory valuation has got four variants actually. Click on plus now. I'm now going to show the variants basically. <clears throat> it can be what? It can be org specific. It can be sub inventory specific. I will now go on and put the org over here now. D zero one one. And then I will now say it's a D zero one. And then F G S now. F G S. And then here, what happens? I can give some category also over there. And go there, costing category I can give. And then I can give an item number. And then I can give an account. For all the four variants, we can now have an inventory valuation actually. If the end client wants for each and every variant, you want to have a separate inventory valuation, we have to give that many actually. So you can see how many combinations is possible now. Fine. It is a two to the power of four, I think. Fine. That many combinations are basically possible. It all depends upon end client. How many vary? How many variants on which what happens? You would like to analyze the inventory valuation. From the supply chain transaction, every item number. If you want, there are thousand item numbers. There will be thousand accounts basically. If you want like this, what happens? You have thousand accounts created in the chart of accounts, and then what about those natural accounts that should be populated over here? I will now put ten iPhone, hundred iPhone, thousand I am going to put. And then, if you want this account to be common for all the things, you click on the set default. What happens? This becomes the default account over here. Default. Yeah. This becomes the default account. You can now see star star is going to come up now. I will now click on the set default again now. Once when I set a default, what happens? Everything is now put as a star star. So if you don't specify, fine, you can go on and give a plus, and then what happens? Only for the inventory org, you can say thousand and one, and then for a sub inventory, you can put thousand and two. So any other variants, you can do it. If no variants are there, what happens? It will not pick up this one. So let's say I am now giving inventory org one, and then in the transaction, I am doing it on two. What happens? It will not pick up only the default. But if you are doing it on two, second inventory org, that account will be populated on the inventory valuation. 
it all depends upon the end customers that is why financial uh, what happens sir dealing is really very tough when compared to supply chain actually and with the supply chain is jujube when compared to finance actually so i have no set up as a default so whatever may be the org whatever may be the sub inventory whatever may be the category whatever may be the item number i have no going to pop it on this this is this is a transactable account which is no made down what we want seven close now i can very well perform a miscellaneous transaction or any other transaction on inventory inventory has got multiple transactions like what miscellaneous receipts miscellaneous issues sub inventory transfers then interop transfers direct and in transit and then transfer orders as well as movement request these are the various transactions we'll be doing in inventory actually so all the transactions are now possible because what happens i have now given the inventory valuation account <coughs> with a star actually <coughs> the star you know now this becomes a transactable combination for me from an accounting perspective actually this is beyond the dynamic and right? this is a beyond dynamic click on save and close now right? you know now for order management what happens the cost of goods sold account i'm going to now and go there click on it now i will not put what cost of goods sold cost and then we will search now i will now go to the cost of goods sold account and right? click on it now and go there cost of goods sold account i'm going to put now so <clears throat> we will now say cost of sales Right. It is basically cost of sales at the org level actually, and right. that you can choose now. Instead of cost of goods account, what happens? Cost of sales account is the one. So this one is a better one. I don't know what the difference between these two now. Right. They, they people normally say that what happens? They used to set up this one. Cost of sales account organization and go to set up. Cost of sales account organization and setting it up and go there. I will now add in your case what happens? There will be so many chart up accounts now. Fine, go there. Click on plus now and then I will now add my chart up account. Click on it, drop it down. I will now choose the D zero one C O E now. Fine, go there. Click on it now <clears throat> and then go down and then here I will now give a plus. cost of sales account i would have given now it has got this variance inventory org is a variant and then what happens we have got only one variant actually go there so 10 iphone 100 iphone what happens 1000 and whatever now and click on set as a default now so let me set it as a default for all the inventory orgs now below the bu now uh, or for for this coa actually so they are all coa specific and not bu specific remember they are all coa specific and go there i am not setting as a default what happens the star is coming the default tick mark is also coming and go there click on it i can now very well perform the what about the order management transactions as well as your inventory transactions but purchasing transactions we cannot do thank you concept goes it will not throw an error there and i am setting up purchasing actually. so click on done by which what about you know completed this inventory valuation transaction now thank go there let us now go and create a miscellaneous result go there so let us now create a miscellaneous transaction let me cancel and then come back on you have just given a cup of milk actually wait one second Okay. <clears throat> now I click on it and then I will now make a create miscellaneous transaction. This time it is very much possible. Now. I click on create miscellaneous transaction now. Here yeah, go there. I will now put the type as what M and then give a tab now. And go there, give a tab. And then I will now choose the miscellaneous receipt now. Click on it. I go there. This time if you go there, click on it now. <clears throat> click on this icon. And then if you give a search now, fine. You know, giving anything at all. Go search. It will now show you one one. Fine. So ten iPhone thousand hundred and thousand. This is a owner's equity. Remember, fine. You should not give it now. Fine. This is now eligible for. Or happens attaching to this. Previously, nothing is coming. Fine, click on OK. It will not throw in there because inventory valuation is not set. And remember, purchasing can not be done. You cannot make a purchase requisition at all. At the time, what happens? I will know. Correct the error actually. Fine, go there. But now, inventory and order management are fully set. Fine right? for the basic activities as such. Remember, it can have four variants now: the org level, sub inventory level, the category level, and then item level also. If you want, you can have a variant now. If the end customer is very tough, you will ask for that many accounts, that many chart. What happens? Your natural accounts, the natural account in some companies will now even go up to five thousand or even ten thousand also, right? because of the requirement by the end customers. Because he wants to study on a particular account how much of money is being transacted, and then he wants to study from a financial perspective. And so, what happens? He may even ask for more accounts. Too. Now, click on plus now. Fine. I'm not going to populate my item over here. Now, fine. Click on plus now. So, let me populate the item over here. Now, fine. Go there. It's a D zero one zero one, and then give a tap. Fine. Give a tap. It will become automatically. So give it up. So the item has come now. Fine, go there. So because our item is now having some standard prefixes, basically, fine, go there. The item has come now. Fine, go there. Yes, go there. You drop down the sub inventory and go there. Click on it. And then I will now choose the FGS. I know having only two sub GS. One is what FGS, and then one is stage. Fine, go there. In this place, what happens? I have not put some thousand and one quantity. <clears throat> and then click on submit. By which what happens? The transaction gets completed. What happens? It will be completed. So the transaction will be getting completed without any issues now. <coughs> Can also it is not done. So let us now keep the item for the second org also because I am going to use it for a transfer order actually. 
So I go there, I will not make a change of the org. I go there, click on this one. I will not do the, on the second org also, I will not keep quantities. I click on the create miscellaneous transaction and then I will not give a change org. I click on change org and then I'm going to change the org to what? Capital D 012 now. Right, you want to click on OK now. Go there. And then it is now done. I go there. <clears throat> Now it vanishes again, and then what happens? You go there, and then again click on the create miscellaneous receipt. Now, go there. now what happens? It will not show you with your current org in the top. Go there, EM, and then give a tap, and then choose the miscellaneous receipt now. Miscellaneous receipt, I'm choosing it now. Okay, okay, now. And then here, what happens? I go there, and then if you click on it, what happens? Sometimes the previous account will be coming, and go there. There's no coming, and go there. So click on it, and then here, what happens? You go there, and then in this place, let me populate the item. Click on plus now. <coughs> miscellaneous, I'm going to populate it. Click on plus now. In some cases, what happens, you'll be having whether we had to use a previous cost or not. Since costing is not set, it's not coming. If you ask what happens, you say what happens, <coughs> say no. no. <coughs> Shall I use the previous cost or not? Since costing is not set, it's not coming. If it comes, what happens, make it as a no and then do it. Now, do that. Click on R, yes, whatever it is. If you want to use the previous cost, you have to use it as yes. Otherwise, what happens, you have to say no. In which case, what happens, we are given a new cost now. So we'll now come to the, as what the costing is set now. Do that. It's a D0101 and then give a tap, item will be coming now. And then I will now populate this one. Now it's what D012 FGS now. I can go there. And then I will now keep some 2000 quantities in there. 2001. I can go there. So I'm going to use this stock for doing a transfer order actually. If I click on submit now. <coughs> so by which what happens? We are not going to have both the transactions. Fine. It causes no issues. Click on OK. So this completes the inventory valuation account for financial accounting and then making a what happens? A miscellaneous transaction actually. Remember, in inventory, we have multiple transactions. One is the miscellaneous receive, one is the miscellaneous receipt, one is the miscellaneous issue, one is the sub inventory transfers, one is the intra transfers on a direct and intransit route, and then one is the transfer orders, and then one is the movement request. If you go on and drop down, what happens? You can also see the movement request. Also. So, movement request is also there, and transfer orders is there, and go there. And then we'll now make a sub inventory transfers also, and then intra transfers on the direct and intransit, and then what happens? We'll now make miscellaneous transactions. Account LIs issues, account LIs receipts, everything will be coming on the same. So for all these transactions, what happens? We have to have the inventory valuation account set on the subledger accounting of what transaction accounting builder. So I have shown you the path, but again, it has got a lot of variants. It itself is a module actually. The transaction accounting builder itself is a module. And then what happens? I have shown you one simple way of setting it up, but actually what happens? It can be even more complex like SLA. Actually. SLA is a one where what happens all these accounts are set in eBay's and then here what happens on the transaction accounting builder they will be setting it up and then what I told you is only for what happens uh, making it work actually but in reality what happens are so many setups are there talk to your financial guy they will tell you about how many variants are there how they will be setting it up fortunately what happens I was involved in the purchasing accounting for which what happens I have now uh, made one uh, big uh, uh, video I'll be sending it to you so watch about how to set up the purchasing accounting actually so purchasing accounting, I was involved in that. And so what happens, I have set up both on eBiz as well as in Fusion Assets. Right? I was involved in it. And then I have set it up. And then based upon my uh, experience, field experience, I have made the record. I will be setting it to tomorrow. And then what happens, you can watch that. <clears throat> so that's on this now. Fine, go there. Now, what happens, the items are available. Any doubts on this now, on this part? You are now in a tougher zone, actually. <clears throat> Good. Sir, can you show us how to... See the online quantity. What yeah, would be? Yeah, online quantity can be seen. Now, go there. Click on it now. You will know how to look at the online quantity. Click on it now. You go to the manage manage item quantities now. Click on the manage item quantities. And then here, what happens? You go there. I will not put the item. This is the organization D zero one two. Go there. Click on it. So D zero one zero one, and then give a tap. The item will be coming automatically. If there are multiple items, it will not show you the list of values. Fine. There's an onbound, on and receiving an inbound other that will be explained on my purchasing training. Actually, fine. Click on search. It will not show this. If you want to see the stock on all the org, fine. Click on change org. And then what happens? They make it as all as HMI. Click on OK now. Now you can see the stock in all the org. You go there. Click on it now. And then again, what happens? You go to the manage item quantities. The selection is all actually. And then you will now put the item over here. Fine. D0101 and then give it a tap. And then click on search now. You can now see item in all the org. And expand it. It will show you all the orgs. So on the first org, what happens? We have 1000. Second org, we have this one. If you expand it still further, what happens? It will now show you the sub inventory. It is, it is those ID actually. Now, the first step for order management is now going to start. The first step for order management is now going to begin. Now, I go there. So, in EBIS, what happens is so simple actually. They have made it so complex here. Now, here, what happens? I go there. I will not create an item. I go there. In EBIS, what happens? You will see about how it's done. Go there. We will now go to the what's called. We will now, uh, you go and get an item. Now, I go there. We will now go to the order management. I go there. <clears throat> now, take it to the end. I go there. We will now go to the order management. So, here, what happens? I go to the inventory now. And go to the inventory, you go to the items and then go to the master items. And go to the items, master items. 
I will not choose M1 or go here. Fine, click on it. And then here, what happens? I will not put an item. Fine, D01 underscore. What happens? Item one. I will not put it. I will not say it's a first sale item. So D01 is not an. Fine. Or after having given the item name and description, what happens? I go to the tools. And then here, what happens? I will not click on copy from. I will not apply template. Per and then give a tab. And then click on the, the template gets applied. So automatically, when you go to the order management area, what happens? You cannot see the customer order is not the the item defining attribute is on. The status attribute is on, the invoice enabled is on, and go to the uh, what happens inventory is inventory item stockable transactable. Everything is on. Right? Was commit, right? By which what happens the item gets saved in the master, and then we go there and then assign it. Go to the tools and then go to the organization assignment and then assign it. So D01 item one is now getting assigned over here. Fine, click on commit. Now let us now go and then give a price for this one. So pricing has been kept in what in the purchasing, and then if you go to the advanced pricing now, <coughs> I don't know why they have kept it in the in the in the, in the mission instance. It's now like this now. And go there. So in this place, what happens? You go to the advanced pricing, pricing, advanced pricing, price list, and then you go to the price list. And go there. Maybe it has been kept again, you know, the very shabby one. But in a professional instance, it will not be like this. Now, purchasing, advanced pricing, prices, prices, and then double click on it. Let me query the corporate price list and go there. Go to the query now and go there. Corp and then percentage and then query. Corporate and then let me insert it now and control down arrow. I'm going to insert record. Shift and F6. I will not copy the previous record. I will not go there. I will not modify the item number now. Find the product value is what D01. Percentage and then give a tap now. Item is now done and go there. I will now give some value. Nuti one day. I'm not giving a value. Fine, go and come, come in. And that's it. The pricing is done now. <coughs> now let us open the sales order and pop it. Go there. So I will now go to the orders and returns and then go to the sales orders now. I will now put a standard customer of 1143 over here now and give a tap. And then here, if you go to the other tab again, what happens? You will be having a warehouse. And, go there. and then click on the line items now. If you click on the line items, what happens? I will now pop it the D01 percentage and then give a tap. The item is going to come. I will now say this is one quantity and then give a tap. The price of one order is coming. Commit. That's it. The sales order is created actually. And this is not so easy in what happens in Fusion actually. They have made the process cumbersome. But what happens? Is they have they are saying that it is not a cumbersome, it is an enhancement from eBus basically. Now, when you open up your sales order, now, find over there. If you open up a sales order, what happens if you go there? If you populate your customer 1143, if you populate your customer, the R comes over here. Now, here in the infusion, the R will not be coming at all. So, in the sales order, what happens? The R will not be coming. So, what we have to do is we have to collect it first of all. There is a collection plan which has to be done now. The collection plans are run in EBS only for the ACP module. ACP model only will load the collection plan. Now, otherwise, what happens? The R will not be coming. So, the first activity is what you go there. You click on the home icon now. Right? Now we are now in getting introduced into order management. <coughs> click on it now. <coughs> so, Sarah, in Fusion, if we are not adapting ACP, even though we have to run the collection? Yes, exactly. Even if the ACP, that is called Planning Central, if Planning Central module is not also there, what happens? We have to do the collection now. One of my students, I don't know whether he is there or not. Hey, come on, are you there? <coughs> Fine. Sindhil, are you there? Uh, he is uh, defining it difficult to come actually because what happens his office is uh, he's, he's working for a UK shit actually and then uh, he is not having any planning center but he's having order management actually <clears throat> he's having a lot of issues basically here and there he's now solving it on his own actually so even if planning center is not there we have to perform a collection actually now what happens I go to the supply chain planning in the supply chain planning we go to the, yeah yes uh, no, no, we don't have defaulting rule like we, yes, default, we have a defaulting uh, rule yes we have a defaulting rule right this is known as a pre-transformation rule in uh, fusion actually the pre-transformation rule was very tough till release 12 and then in the release 13, what happens, they have simplified it. But even then, it is not so simplified like EBS basically. EBS, the defaulting rule is excellent actually. Beautiful. I will say it's really excellent. One of my students is now getting paid only for uh, setting up the defaulting in EBS basically. Right? That much of a complexity we can incorporate. But now what happens, the easiness has come only in release 13 now in the form of a pre-transformation rule of our defaulting. But again, what happens, uh, not the functionality of EBS is now. It will be coming very soon. That's what they say. Now they have made it easy. The life was really very difficult in release 11 and release 12. <coughs> now it has now become GGB now in, <coughs> in release 13 actually. But even then, what happens? The full power of defaulting is not there in future. It will be coming. Gradually it's coming actually. So click on the plan inputs now. Fine, go there. Supply chain planning and then I will now go to the plan inputs now. Fine, go there. In this place. We have to first of all see whether our org has now come or not. Fine, go there. Click on it now. Fine. Click on the task also. And then here, what happens? You go to the manage planning source systems. You go to the manage planning source systems. Fine. Click on it now. Manage planning source systems. You're going over. So here, what happens? It can be what happens? Integrated with very many systems actually. Fine. 
there are so many systems that are just coming from external also. <coughs> and then the default system which is there available here, what happens for fusion is what OPS actually. <coughs> This, uh, this is known as what orchestration order orchestration you go there and then here what happens you go to the manager organization list and then see whether your org has come or not click on the refresh organization list then refreshing it and you go there go to the query mode and then let me query my org now and go there so if you go and then query it now and go there it is a d01 and then i enter in now now what happens my orgs have come now actually because what happens i have already run the concurrent actually because of which it is not is coming now Right. My org has come now. My master org and child org has come, but Adamus, it will not be coming just like that. So what you have to do, I'll tell you, because since I have already run the concurrent, so we have to run a concurrent here. So here, what you do is, you, you are already in this place now. I will again go back and then show it to you now. So what you have to run, I will tell you. You go to the click on done now. So here, what happens, you, you, you go to the, what's called the plan inputs now. In the plan inputs, what happens, you go there, click on it, and then go to the collect planning data. You go to the collect planning data. And then for the first time when you're doing it, what happens, you go there. And then choose the system as OPS now. Right? That is only the inbuilt system over here now. And then do a collection only for a net change. Do not go for a targeted change. The targeted change will be bringing in all the items. It will now wipe out all the data of all these things now. It will now wipe out all these things and then bring in everything fresh now. And it will take a longer time. And then it's a very heavy concurrent. Please do not do it now because it has already been done there. And so don't do it. Do only the net change. Net change means whatever changes have made, whatever you are doing. So the first time what happens, what you do is you go and then collect all the organizations. <coughs> click on organization as well as we have created items also, not right? Item also you bring it. Click on items and then bring it right inside. So only collect this things on the reference data. And then on the supply planning data, what happens? You collect the on and picture. You go there, click on on and then collect the on and nothing else is to be collected. So if you collect everything, it will not take a longer time and then it will be a very heavy one. So collect only whatever is relevant for you. Go there here, items and organizations, and then the supply side, what happens? The on and I'm collecting it. So go there and then click on submit. This is the first activity you are doing now. Fine. Since I've already done by mistake, what happens? I was checking, I've already done what happens now. Come so go there and then on and then click on submit. Where was the items and on and will be coming now? It is now giving you a warning. Are you have not done the what happened? The targeted collection. Fine. The previous, the prayer, prayer one is not a targeted collection. That is what you're saying. That doesn't matter. Fine. Okay, okay. So I click on yes, no, fine. Now we are going for a net change actually. The previous one is not, not targeted on. That's what is the previous one is also a net change. Okay, doesn't matter. Fine, click on yes, no, fine. The warning comes in, what happens? Accept it. The concurrent will be running. So by which what happens? It comes into the planning area. So once when it comes, afterwards, what you have to do, I'll tell you. So, now since it is already collected, what happens? You, once you send, what happens? You go there. Again, you go to the plan inputs. And then on this place, what happens? You click on it. And then here, what happens? You go to the manage planning source systems. You click on the manage planning systems and then here what happens you choose ops and then click on the manage organization list and then here what happens if you go and then query on or all what happens it will not be coming at all d01 and then query your organizations will not come at all and go there so uh what happened previously it came now what happened i don't know make a blank query now and click on search now <coughs> enter in now it all came isn't it for a d01 or b01 only came now okay fine it came only for b01 it didn't come for D01 actually. Fine. So I was thinking that what happens, it has come already. Fine, go there. So B01 only came now. D01 is not coming. Right. Click. We, were huh? we, were able to see, we were able to see D01 there. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, when, then me query then fine. Z01 and then uh, click on enter now. Fine. You know, see. Otherwise, what happens, refresh the organization list. Fine, click on the refresh organization list and then make a query now. Fine. D01 and then enter now. Fine, go there. So it's a visible lecture. Fine. We have to refresh it now. After you complete the concurrent, and then what happens? You refresh the organization list and then query for it now. It logged. Now you have to enable for collections actually. Then click on it. So click on all the three actually. And then click on save and close. So this is the first step you have to do as soon as you create any org as such. Right? Any org and item, what happens? No, a basic one. You have to click on enable for collections. Uh, yeah, if you click on enable for collections, what happens? Everything will be selected actually. Everything will be selected in one go actually. You put a tick mark on this one, all the things will be once again. I'm not showing sure you that I enable it and it. And then if you put a tick mark on this, what happens? Whatever has been chosen, everything will be done in one go. <clears throat> so enable for collections of your org is the first activity. Only when it is collected, what happens? It will not start to work. Right? Click on save and close. This is the first activity you are doing. And then the second activity, okay, fine. It's not time actually, it's 10 40 because what happens if we start explaining, it will be going further actually. So what happens? I will now start to explain that on Monday morning. So there are two activities which you have to do now. Fine. The first activity is now completed. That is what in the managed planning source systems area, 
whatever the, we have enabled our org for data collection actually manage plumbing systems here whatever we have enabled the org for the data you have to choose this and then go to the manage organization list and then after refreshing it whatever the query and then put a tick mark on the screen now the second activity was before we put on the sales order yeah. hello even if planning is not there we need to enable this yes is it mandatory is a mandatory actually even if planning is not there right? hey sindil have you come <coughs> That guy is working without planning, so what I want to do, he has to do. <clears throat> so he is working very near to my company, actually, very near to my house actually, ten minutes walk from my house. So Sindhil, and he is an expert on order management actually. <clears throat> Deepak is also an expert. Ashok is also an expert. But, uh, but everybody is not uh, expert on order management actually. Uh, other models they are expert actually. So there are two activities before you put your item on a sales order actually. The first activity is complete. The second activity we will now see on Monday night actually. Right. So tomorrow is holiday, right? Jolly, jolly day tomorrow, and then we will now see on Monday. Ah, uh, Nana, Rajita. Tell, tell me. Tell. Actually, I have a doubt. How to enable the LP LPNs? LPNs is basically. Yeah, LPN. I don't know. Right. It is again coming on warehouse now, basically. So warehouse is lock fire actually. So okay. Lock fire. You have to know. Right. In fusion, it is known as a lock fire one. Lock fire WMS actually. Then okay. How it is integrated? This is not having a lock, a lock fire license actually. This is okay. not having a lock fire license. And then you have to work on a lock fire license. Actually. <clears throat> if you have a vision demo database, fine. That will be enabled for everything there. You have to see now. Fine. Again, LPN concept is not known to you. Okay. So you're working on LPN? Yes. WMS organizations. Oh, you are uh, in a uh, infusion. Uh, WMS you're working, huh? No, no, no. I'm not working in Artwell. I'm working. Oh, in R12, okay, fine. Yeah, R12 is a different one. Actually. Here it is a different one. Okay. So you are working on, uh, Rajita is working on uh, EBIS uh, warehouse management system. Good. Any other doubts by anybody? Now you are into tougher zones, now fine. So, so Nana, what is the purpose of this collection planning? I feel like it is very bad. But when I discussed with one of the development, when I was in Oracle Bangalore, some two weeks back, I was in Oracle Bangalore, connecting a training for Oracle. So I was discussing with that guy. No, 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 no don't say it's a big <laughs> He's saying that it has been made as a purpose. And then what happens? If you start to learn planning also, what happens? You'll understand about how excellent it is being configured. And even without a planning also, what happens? We have to perform a collection now. So oh. one, another way you collect it, what happens? We cannot put it also. Right? So is Oracle uh, create an interface so that uh, while running a planning, mm -hmm. then what on and balances is we are having? On and balance also, it will not show at all. Otherwise, you connect it now. You have a stock of 100, what happens? It will never show at all in the sales order. Yeah. It will get back ordered actually. <laughs> oh. You have to collect it. Then only okay. what happens is the on and has to be collected before you go. Okay, so from the order, point, order management point of view, it is mandatory for us. So we yeah, have to. Yeah, yeah, it's a mandatory one now. So in a day-to-day -day transaction, Nana, a lot of transactions you know, coming <laughs> and going, right? How yeah. do we manage it? Yeah, I will come to that point. If I go there. So what happens? You'll be having so many PO receipts, so many manufacturing receipts in the inventory. Right? So there is an update program. There is an update program for the supplies only. For the supplies, what happens? We can do a fresh, a fresh find. What is one? There's a real-time supply update is there. If you run the concurrent, what happens? Let us say suddenly I have a stock of let us say 50 monitors, and then 25 has been produced and then brought in now. So the moment you run the concurrent, what happens? The supply gets updated on the collected one. On the collected area, what happens? The supply will be syncing with the what happens? The source systems actually. <clears throat> one is the collected so area, that, one is the source system. Yeah. In that case, you know, whatever the inventory comes in, that yeah. ATP will be available immediately for the order, right? Only when you run the concurrent now. Only after okay. running the concurrent, it will be available for the order. Otherwise, what happens? It will not be available for the but order. But EBS running the collection and uh, ah, you know yeah. running ATP, it will run forever, like you know three hours or you know four yeah. hours. Yeah. But how about in a fusion? See, in EBS, what happens is that when you run the collection plan in EBS on models, what happens? It runs for eight hours actually. Correct. You run in the night and then what happens? The next day morning only, what happens? You can see it now. Here it is not so. It runs in fifteen to twenty minutes, very fast actually. That has been simplified actually. So even if you run for a targeted collection, what happens within 20 minutes, it will be getting completed. <coughs> yeah, my current client is facing a lot of challenges now because you know yes. they are receiving inventory very frequently. Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, because they are adopting that ATP and collection, yes. even we are running a targeted collection, the targeted collection is running for two hours. Oh, you know? But I was yeah. told that, okay, again, what happens, there is a lie. Because this I discussed with the guy, what happens there. 
the development team oracle they say they are giving an assurance even for a big project what happens we are saying that 20 minutes is sufficient for collection that's what no 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 <laughs> that that's not true i'm i'm i know i you know i've been pulled for each and every meeting uh, no client is making a lot of noise mm. target collection is running for 2 hours oh god it's really really pain actually right in that case what happens uh, we cannot even think of uh, what happens uh, Uh, scheduling it actually right uh, then again, that is you know very fusion is very good tool for them you know if it is completed <laughs> in 20 minutes <coughs> this total concept i feel is bad actually why to collect a data for sales orders i asked this question but that guy was giving such explanation since i don't know planning what happens i never understand his answers at all it has been synced with the planning and then so many activities can be done nicely this thing that thing he is saying so many things but what am i say order management should have been decoupled from planning actually that is what my uh, opinion but uh, what happens uh, only the uh, developers has to say justify this no matter <clears throat> they say that you wait for one more year and then afterwards you see the power of fusion actually that's what they say this they are selling it for the past four years actually <laughs> i started working four years back on release nine from that time onwards they are telling the same story when i attended the first training in what happens in uh, uh, in uh, in oracle headquarters they told the story and then what happens i was again sent for the second training also in the second training also what about the same uh, topic they are saying it will not become very powerful when company is <laughs> after 3 years also what happens the same story they are saying it's really very painful actually collecting the data and then putting a sales order what happens is really really painful actually the system becomes slow and even the pricing engine what happens it is not so powerful Release eleven, we had a hell lot of problem basically. <clears throat> Now, on uh, when I put a price, what happens? It comes after three hours on the sales order. The price is ten. I'm making a change to twelve now. Only after three hours, it gets updated on the sales order. Remember? Now it is happening in five minutes actually, <clears throat> or even less actually. Now that uh, that speed has been brought up now actually. The price change whenever you are making the pricing, what happens? And then all the futures of uh, EBS pricing is not available in future. It is having a very bigger one in release eleven. release stone was better than release 13 is still better actually release 13 is really good and then even it cannot match ebus at all as of is really really very difficult actually and no qp custom in user yeah, right no qp custom no there are there uh, when compared to the qp custom what happens they have developed a beautiful uh, what happens uh, services actually find some sort of a services have been developed i couldn't understand this one it's a very concept very complex one actually i will be introducing those things to you in the fag end of it now fine uh, it's uh, those features are available here now fine in fusion there are so many features have been brought in now fine uh, it's uh, really what am i they say it's excellent one then compared to ebus now fine uh, the qp custom equivalent are all available here now <clears throat> in a, you have to know adf actually fine if you don't know adf application desktop framework fine the language like a java uh, it will be very difficult to configure those things actually otherwise what happens we had to work work on and learn those things pricing is pow becoming powerful and then it will not become more powerful than ebus that's what they say now as of now it's not so it's becoming powerful that time because i have not seen the transition from 11 release 11 to release 13 actually so it's not becoming gradually powerful <clears throat> so any questions now fine so we will now begin the second setup on the order management on monday night at 9:30 pm india Okay, fine. Bye for now, and then we'll now meet on Monday night at nine thirty PM India. Thank you. All. Thank you. Fine. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nana. Bye. Thank you, Nana. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Nana. Bye.